I thought I'd give you a shot of the back side with the, the cover in place here um, and how it's going to fit. So it's going to sit like that. So you can see that this is how the wire goes in, in my little pigtail that comes down. The other gear is going sit, to be sitting right here. So the other gear will be sitting right there. I just got to make sure I have enough room when I go all the way over like that that this isn't going to hit. going to be awful close. Um, let's see. It's going to go this way, so it's going that way. So advanced would be, the advanced would be over that way, so it's probably about where it's going to end up. Right like that. Let's see. Let's see make here. I'm just sticking it on the back of a on the shank of a three eighths end mill just to hold it in there to Yeah, it should be alright. It should be just fine. It should run fine and there would be just enough room. If I had to do it over again I would go with a bit bigger gear here so that they both the gear ratios would be bigger and move this up. Well I can't really move it up any further. Now this will work. I could take and put, I could put a screw over here too, to hold it like that. Well, anyway, I, th I think it'll work the way it is. Um, the only thing I would be concerned about would be this rubbing, but it's fairly thick material there and even if it did rub it's just going to wear a spot into that thick material it, sh it shouldn't reach the wires anyway the wires are out over further so <clears throat> if it all of a sudden quits I don't, I'll know what <laughs> what it was but um, so so the next thing, like I say, the next thing I want to do is put that the vent in there. And now I'm debating on whether to put it here or actually put it over in the case. I, I think I'm going to put it here because the reason being, if I put it here and I have a port coming out over here, going to the crankcase, Anything that go, any mist or anything that goes by, it's going to get right onto the, onto the cam. It's it's going to do. It's going to benefit. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, anyway, like I say, I just thought I'd show that to you. Right, I'm going to go put that vent in and start thinking about putting things together. Catch you later. Okay, I've got uh, one of the sides hooked up, one of the Hall Effect sensors hooked up to the my dual board over here. And I want to see it exactly where it's firing at so I can line it up correctly when I put the magnets in the cam. So I'm just going to... Right? So it would be coming around the see, it's going to be spinning. It's going to be spinning. 
counterclockwise, so it's going to go that way. So it's going to be coming in from this side. So it's right about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark on that. Right there. That's where it fires at. I'm going to disconnect that so I don't zap myself. All right. And now I've got the I've got the cam disc out and what I've done is I've got uh, I marked top dead center here on it and that's lined up with this the top rib on the top of the cover so I can put this in here and line this up with the top of that rib and I know about where it's going where I'm going to need to drill and put the holes in so put this on there line that up just line up that mark with this top edge that's top dead center so that is where it's going to fire at so I want the magnet I want the magnet in this vicinity right here. And I also marked the top dead center of, of the second cylinder just to check myself. So line that up so it's on that tooth. It's on that tooth right there that I got marked right there. I just marked the tooth. So it's up right there. And this will be where the, the second one would go. It should be. 159 degrees I think it was between them from there to there they almost look like 180 they shouldn't be though I'm gonna I'll, I'll just put the first one in anyway and then I'll calculate off of that over to the other side for 159 degrees I know that in the book or in the uh, drawings, it's this is over 39 degrees, but it's not going to be that, that way because I'm changing everything. So hopefully, I'm doing it right. But I should be able to to uh, line up where I want that first one right there, and uh, you know, dial that in, kind of line that up drill the hole and then have it calculated from there over to the next one hopefully so in order to line that up I'm going to put it in uh, just a collet block put it up against stop and then dial it in and then I'm just going to have this snug and then turn it to where I need it and then take it back out, tighten it and then uh, go ahead and drill the hole. I don't have uh, indexing I could put it on the NC and have the have it do it there too. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. This this will work. Um, get spoiled with the NC all the time. Um, I don't have a rotary table. Only thing I have is a spindex for indexing so I know that they're 100 and I could take and turn it also the degree um, 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 um. we mean turning the vise have the vise sitting like that and then turn the vise this way and then turn it out back in Will that work? Okay, so I'll go like that, dial it in, come over here, drill the hole, swivel the vise 159 degrees, redial it in, move it over the distance out. That should work too. So I got several ways I can do it. So, but I think I'm going to try it this way with just putting it in there and, and uh, eyeballing it and then going to a calculated number. Go. 
Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set up and do it that way. And uh, when I get the holes drilled, we'll we'll put it in there and we'll see if it firing in the right spot. It should. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Because I know, I've got the I've got the two the, the two uh, teeth marked that are top dead center, which is this one right there and this one right there. So I could count the degrees around and make sure too, but I know that that's right because I double, tripled, and quadruple checked it. <laughs> um, oh, and I did, I did clean up this. Uh, I did clean up the the inside of that too. You know, I cleaned that up and then milled that all out in there. So, but I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for the magnets. When I come back, I should have the holes in the magnets and we'll put it on there and see if it works. Okay, I've got it dialed in here. Got it tightened up in the Fizey collet. I'm not, I'm not going to have to take it out of the vise now because everything's all tightened up and I got this off to the side. I should have had this turned a little more. Mm, darn it. I see it now that I'm off about maybe 10 degrees. Well, I'm going to set a stop here, take it out, move it to 10 degrees, and then put it back in and we'll see where we're at. We'll see how close it'll repeat. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to take it out, but I had it lined up pretty good. But by looking at it now I can see I'm not I'm not lined up. Okay. So let's get the indicator off of there. Get the device handle over here and take it out. And I'll lay it down. And get the wrench and loosen it up. And it turn, get back up here and turn this about 10 degrees. Let's see if I can kind of eyeball it so it's straight across. Like it right there. Tighten it up. Tighten this back up. So it doesn't move around. Slide it back in there against the stop without banging it. Tighten that. And let's bring the indicator down and see where we're at. Hopefully, we're close. Alright. Zero. Zero. Yep. It repeated. That's good. That's a good sign. So now I just want to eyeball it out. Here I, I took the magnets. Got them right here. Ah, if I can get them picked off the vise, and I marked the, I marked one side. I don't know whether it's negative or positive, but they're both. If they're negative, they're both negative. If they're both, if they're positive, they're both. Anyway, they're both sitting the exact same way now. So, I want to come over and put a hole in there. I think those magnets were, were they 125? Ah. Yeah, they're an eighth inch. So, get the real chunk in there. All right, get a center drill. I'll be able to get down there with a center drill though. So and now we're gonna move off. 
and I gotta when I move it off I gotta take note of the number so I can calculate where the other one needs where the other magnet needs to be. So there's 100, 2, 3, there's 400. That's going to be a little too much. Uh, go back to five. I'm going to get a longer center drill. Almost might not. I'm gonna go fifty thousand. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to decide where I'm gonna put it. I want it out as far as I can. Because that'll mean the dwell time will be a lot less. Um, to do, I think this will be fine right here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. And then a 125 reamer. Actually, 124.5 is what I want. Hard to read. That's a one twenty six. One twenty four five. Mm, right and we'll switch to low. oil on there.
Okay. We're in business. So now I gotta go calculate. I gotta go calculate over to where I'm at. So in which I don't remember now. <laughs> uh, I know it was an even number, I'm just gonna go like this here and get a scale. It is can't remember if I went six hundred or five hundred. With all my goofing around five hundred. So I'm a half inch off center. So I'll calculate where the other the other one is supposed to be. It should be up and over here. It should be right about in there somewhere. But I'll go ahead and lay it out in CAD to make absolutely sure. I don't want to make that cam over. Well, I wouldn't have to make the cam over. I could just I could just turn the discs on here or the gear on here and, and repress press it off and repress it back on. I don't want to do that though. So I want to get it right the first time. So I'll be back.